So-called coffee beans are not actually beans, they are in fact the seeds of a fruit. And the particular method that you use to get the seeds out of the fruit, well, that has a really profound effect on how your coffee is gonna taste. Getting the seeds out is known somewhat generically as processing, and it's arguably as important to the taste of your coffee as roasting is. Most people who drink coffee know what kind of roast they like. Do you know what kind of processing you like? Do you like dry or wet? processed coffee, or maybe something in between. I had no idea until I visited this coffee company north of Atlanta. It's called Alma Coffee, and here I drank some really good dry or natural processed coffee, and it immediately became my new favorite thing, a beverage almost unrecognizable to me as coffee, but incredible. We're gonna talk about these different ways of liberating the seed from the fruit, talk about why dry processing kind of faded from popularity for a bit and why it has kind of come back now among coffee nerds. It's a very similar story to the one you could tell about wheat. For most of the history of cultivated grains, a cleaner or purer, more refined product was the goal. But then we got arguably too good at it, and some folks started wanting to turn the dial back to something more like this. It's not the perfect comparison with coffee processing, but I'll show you what I mean. Real quick, you might remember that I visited this coffee company recently for a fully sponsored video that was about coffee roasting. That's a good video, it's linked in the description. What you're watching right now, this is not that. This video has a different sponsor, and no one who has anything to do with the coffee industry is paying me right now. I'm telling you about this because I think it's super interesting. Let's go. The fruits of coffee shrubs or trees are known as cherries for obvious reasons, though if you were to bite into one, you'd be real disappointed. Apparently the fruit itself can actually taste kind of nice, there's just very little of it. You got a waxy skin, then a very thin layer of mesocarp, which is the actual fruit part of a fruit. Then usually two of these proportionally massive seeds. Coffee cultivation began in East Africa and or the Arabian Peninsula, and legendary accounts of its discovery there involve people being very disappointed by the fruit. They say they tried to eat the seed, it was really hard, it was really bitter, they tried cooking it, still super hard, so as kind of a last resort, they tried, you know, sort of brewing it, making a soup out of it, basically. And it was still pretty bitter, but it made them feel zippy. No doubt people have tried all kinds of ways of getting the seeds out, but in the hot and dry climate of Arabia and East Africa, the easiest way to do it on a large scale was what we now call dry or natural processing. Alma does this at Leticia Hutchins' family farm in Honduras. Her husband Harry is getting ready to roast some at the roastery. At the coffee farm down in Honduras, Finca Territo, the natural process is one in which we are taking the coffee off the tree and we're actually drying it in the coffee cherry skin. You can actually see the discoloration, the staining right there, but it, this coffee really smells of, of really ripe fruit, kind of strawberries. People call this natural probably because it mimics what would happen in nature if the fruit just kind of ripened on the tree, fell off, and then just sat there. Or at least this mimics what would then happen in a hot, dry climate like East Africa or Arabia. In a wet climate like Honduras, the fruit would just rot if you let it sit there. At Finca Terrorito, they lay the whole cherries onto a concrete patio for a day in the sun, and then they move them to these raised beds where air can circulate all around the fruit. Over the next two or three months, they watch them really carefully and move them around or turn them to make sure that molds and mildews and such are not growing on them. And at the end, this is what the coffee cherry looks like after it's dried out. Through some relatively simple milling, you pop the seeds out of the desiccated skin, and there you go, dry processed coffee beans. Again, you can see the lingering discoloration on their surface. Alma does a very light or low temperature roast on those beans because they want to taste the bean and not the roast. Remember, that's what a light roast gets you. They're setting up what's called a cupping, an almost ritualistic process in the coffee industry where you just pour hot water onto naked coffee grounds in a cup. You you let them steep, let them bloom, you grab a heated spoon and push away the so-called crust floating at the top so that you can smell and then sip. This is supposed to give you the purest experience of the coffee. 
That's the natural process. Yeah. Super funky. It's very funky, <laughs> very floral. That's an understatement, I think. That is the kind of brew I would like to enjoy with my Morning Brew, the sponsor of this video. Let me thank them real quick. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter covering the latest in business, finance, and tech. I've been waking up to it for about a year now, and it's great. A breezy, easily digestible five-minute skim of things I need to know. I invest a little now, so the stock summaries are really great, and they tell me what the numbers mean. Like, this stock is not shooting up because the company, like, makes money. It's shooting up because someone decided to make it a meme. You wouldn't think it was possible to effectively summarize the Keystone XL pipeline saga in just a few bullet points, but somehow Morning Brew does it, and they also managed to treat the opposing viewpoints for respectfully. If you're into business and tech, don't wake up to a social media doom scroll. Read something funny and informative and totally free. Subscribing to Morning Brew takes all of 15 seconds. You'll be helping me out if you do it via my link in the description. Sign up for Morning Brew with my link in the description. It's free. Thank you, Morning Brew. Now, what does natural processed coffee taste like? Coffee that has been dried inside its whole intact fruit? That tastes like a coffee juice cocktail. Even though the fruit has been removed totally, just the residual flavor of it there on the bean has made it so fruity. Harry describes it as like tropical Skittles, which I think is inaccurate only in the sense that it isn't a very flattering comparison. There isn't much actual like sugar sweetness in there, nor is there actually much acidity, surprisingly. There's just a ton of this really, really deep aroma of tropical fruits. I tasted that and naturally I thought to myself, why isn't all coffee like this? Why don't they dry all coffee right inside the fruit? It tastes so good. Well, I I suppose in part it's because there's room in the world for lots of very different coffee. You might not want the fruity aromas and heavy body of a dry processed coffee every day. It's also the case that not all dry processed coffee is as good as that. And historically, it definitely wasn't as good as that. Lots of things can go wrong with the dry or natural process. For example, if you don't harvest your coffee cherries very carefully, maybe you've got a lot of underripe ones in there and you don't do a good job sorting them out, those flavors are gonna end up being really apparent in the coffee. It's also the case that like, if you dry the beans not up on fancy expensive drying beds, but like down on the ground, you could get some uh, rustic or earthy notes in there as well. Plus, you could actually mess up and let them rot a little bit down there, let them get a little bit of mold on them, in which case some really off spoiled notes make it into the coffee or you have to throw away a big chunk of the coffee that you are drying down there because you notice it's going moldy so you've lost a lot of your crop. Plus the natural process just takes a long time. All of this is why somebody, Dutch colonists it is often said, somebody invented the wet process resulting in washed coffee beans. Washed coffee, the most common coffee around the world and this is where we are taking everything off the cherry skin and leaving just the coffee parchment to then be dried. Most of Alma's coffees are washed. Most fancy single origin coffees are washed. Washed coffee has historically been regarded as the superior product, and a lot of people today still regard it as the superior product. The specifics, of course, vary a lot, but first you generally float the cherries in water to sort them. Unripe fruit or leaves and such are gonna float. The good fruit is gonna sink. Very efficient and effective sorting system, that is. Now, dry processed coffees can also be sorted via this floating method, and sometimes they are. But you gotta remember that historically the dry process originates from dry climates where they don't have spare water for doing this. Then in the wet process, you pass the cherries through some kind of machine that strips off the outer part of the fruit, the skin and some of the mesocarp or the meat of the fruit. But a little bit of the meat is gonna stick to the seed. You can't just tear it off with the machine. That meat is what we call the nectar or the mucilage. And the way you get that sweet, sticky outer layer off is you put the beans in a big wet tank and you let it ferment. 
you're probably not going to get any of the bad microorganisms that cause like mold and rotting. You're going to get the friendly microorganisms that you know in the kitchen from bread making. You're going to get yeasts and you're going to get like lactic acid producing bacteria, acetic acid producing bacteria. And you let these bacteria get in there and they munch on what's left of the fruit on the seed for about a day. And then what they leave behind, you can just wash off. It's crumbly. You just blast it off with water. Totally clean coffee beans are what you have left. You still got to dry them, but they dry much more quickly and easily in this state, either in the sun or in a machine you can do. You still have to pop them out of a little dry husk that remains. That's typically done right before export, but there you go. Now, the wet process does use a lot of water, which can be a really precious resource in some places. It also creates a lot of coffee processing wastewater, which is stinky. And so there's environmental hazards associated with it if that water is not really well managed by the farmer. But Washed coffee tastes much more purely of the bean. It's usually a little more acidic, in part because that's from the bean itself. It might also be from acetic acid producing bacteria involved in the fermentation process, the same bacteria that make vinegar for us. Washed coffees taste great. And perhaps more importantly, washed coffees are more consistent. Less can go wrong. Here's an interesting thing I learned in this coffee history book, Uncommon Grounds by Mark Pendergrast. Quote, as the coffee industry developed during the late 19th century, importers began to refer to two types of coffee, Brazils and Milds. The Brazilian coffee gained a reputation for lower quality, often but not always deserved. And this was for a few reasons, but one of them was that in Brazil, they were generally dry processing and often not very carefully. And you get that kind of dirty taste, people call it. However, go forward in history a little bit and a new way of processing emerged out of Brazil, a process that kind of splits the difference between dry and wet processing. You mechanically strip off that outer skin and flesh, but you don't then ferment the remaining mucilage. You dry it like you would a natural coffee. The result is natural pulped or honey processed coffee from the fact that the mucilage, when it's dried, becomes very um, sticky and smells um, very sweet, almost kind of honey-like. And let's taste some. You know, they cup and taste every batch they roast there at Alma just to make sure it's good. At the end of the day, we'll have a sink full of just little cups with a bunch of little samples in them. And we probably consume, what, 10 plus cups a day in total with all the samples we're drinking. But yeah. Yikes. So here's that honey processed one. Beans dried inside that sticky inner fruit flesh. And it really is the best of both worlds. It's got bright acidity, a lighter body, but still some of those tropical fruit notes. Very, very tasty. And this is how coffee is like wheat. I recently grew and processed some wheat myself. I'm going to show you that soon. For thousands of years, the goal was to make the whitest, most refined flour you could, because less refined flour just tended to be dirty, literally dirty, and filled with indigestible plant parts that tasted really harsh. Now, with advanced modern processes, you can make whole wheat flour that is not so harsh and crude. And in a lot of ways, that less processed product is better. Same deal with coffee. There's a lot of people now making really fine dry process or honey processed coffee that is not just a cruder version of the refined washed product. I think they're worth giving a shot.